Hello, and we are here. Say something, Silver. Hello, good weekend. Hey, good weekend. Not quite. Apparently you have to go to work tomorrow. Yeah. To be abused by the, uh, you know, the capitalist uh, overlord. Yeah, I think we need to think about a new way of running our economy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, just mix it up. I no, once, no. Uh, I Do once not was mix in anything. Let me be in charge, and everything will be solved. No, I'll be in charge. You can help. But I uh, once, uh, I think it was the first time I was on a YouTube stream a long time ago, and uh, I ended up arguing with an Israeli that believed in the same nonsense that Vosh talks about this syndicalism. I don't know. Um, Co-ops, uh, you know, this co-op thing. When people, Wasn't people, the syndicalist socialist uh, were, found, were the I one who founded fascism. I don't know what he was on about, but he was talking about co-ops, and uh, I just, uh, I didn't, I didn't realize this was a sign of things to come. Uh, at the time, it was quite novel to hear someone talking about co-ops. Anyway, um, here we are. Um, I had a. Uh, I listened to uh, the academic agent the other day explaining uh, a bit about Israeli politics and how the Lukid party, have you heard about the Lukid party? Uh, are they uh, the followers of John Locke? John I don't Lockheed. know. <laughs> John, yeah, the following of John Locke. <laughs> it's the Lukid party, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, obviously a high level of expertise went in there. He really understands the Israeli political scene. You know, you know what very, very uh, funny to me with all this uh, alt-right uh, on the verge of alt-right, I, I don't really care for, for, all, the, for all that uh, matter. The, the, in this specific area, they pretend to be so extreme, uh, so uh, well-versed, sorry, so well-versed, and on other super, super minute details, they send one of the representatives to do research to read the 20 books, like why there is a single old writer who go to, to Israel to, to study the terrain and tell them in their private uh, fortune forms how Israel is in from the inside as a yeah. very low-key intelligence emission. They're super ignorant and fine, they can hate us for all they care, but what are you, why are you saying stupid nonsense like a Lokide party? What are you, retarded? You can well, see... It, uh, you can they're see, like the Luber uh, party, you know the Luber? The Luber. Ah, the, 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 the Lowy the Bear. The, the Lowy Lowy Bear, Bear. party. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, they can't even send a single guy to see, hey, let's see what the enemy says. Uh, you should see Israeli uh, news channel in English, like I the Republicans. Nothing. The, re the Republicans party. You know the Republicans party? <laughs> uh, the base stakes, we we're just talking about you. You're here. Good to see you. Uh, we were saying just only good things. Only, only good things. Um, so uh, here we are. We have Ray. Hello, Ray. We have ten people, man. This is this is we're massive. We're taking over. This is the Jewish takeover. <laughs> You're watching it as it happens. You could tell your grandchildren about it, how it happened. You were there. Um, so what's new, Silva? Actually, you told me there are quite a few uh, things. Uh, uh, I I want to tell something that made me very very uh, have had an amazing day. Turns out that yesterday on uh, on Wednesday, no, I think between f f no no matter in the middle of the week, Israel suddenly decided to be completely chad for one day, and it was completely glorious. It was a very eventful day. Turns out that there was a platoon of a uh, free terrorist from the moderate PLO, as not the Hamas, the counter uh, group who are the tyrant uh, rulers of area A and B and uh, the Judea and Samaria. The peace-loving uh, PA. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they had uh, a, a terror uh, cell group called uh, the Temple uh, Mount uh, Brigade. Listen, they're mostly the peaceful. Lapsa. They're mostly yeah. peaceful. Yeah, they were mostly peaceful. Uh, exactly. they, were fu they were fully peaceful in the Second Intifada, but after that yeah. they became mostly peaceful. Mm. Anyway, 
והוא פרי טרוריסט הוא הד סל טוגדר אקט קומפליטלי און ואר און בידאוט אני אבוב קורדינשן בטון אבוב בלסינג דאטס איט and we did a shoot a drive by shootings in Judea and Samaria each night try to kill soldiers to kill civilians and so on they missed every time we did it uh, three to four times and there was a, 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 a intelligence in the Shin Bet Israeli secret uh, police service that they were about to do a massive uh, in the a massive uh, shooting uh, attack together All of them at once and uh, the Shin Bet decided this they are they are not uh, allowed to have any single minute that they may carry it carry it out in the future so they set an ambush in uh, Hebron no I think Shrem yeah in Shrem we did an ambush in Shrem when their car they drove uh, I, uh, for from one area to another who knows why maybe for the terrorist attack maybe for another hideout and so on anyway Uh, soldiers did them absolutely Bonnie and Clyde style ambush they riddled the card with something like uh, at one more 100 uh, round the car completely got splattered uh, completely mm. uh, obviously every single one got at least shot at 15-20 times so one, the photo of the car it looked like a sieve yeah I, I will search very very quickly and uh, They, uh, many of the peaceful uh, bunch in the the PA uh, became very very agitated agitated, agitated. Yes. yeah ah the, the KGB skeleton Abu Mazen declared that he sees all connections with Israel from now on obviously a lie uh, and this lie will be cancelled in a year max and it will be an open lie anyway So here, here's the kicker, after three of them got riddled with bullets, turns out they, they, they had a mistake. One of the three members, one of the three of the squad was in another location and they had a, 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 a terrorist body who was not in this platoon, so he got killed instead of the real one that they searched for. So anyway, today there was a headline that the Shin Bet gave a phone call to that uh, terrorist who got away and they, they told him look you, you are not scot free you either uh, turn yourself immediately right now or you will be hunted down and killed surrender right now or you will be hunted down and killed so this is one uh, Chad, uh, two Chad moves in the the Chudan Samaria thanks to the Shin Bet for their hard work and now for an- another uh, news that we Shin Bet is uh, security services Yeah, it's basically like the Israeli MI5. Uh, America does not have a real parallel example because we have so many different organizations. It's not simplified like Israel and the UK and so on. So anyway, here's another thing that we, Israel, uh, uh, became chaired uh, twice in another uh, instance. Uh, that threat uh, hiding underground in Lebanon, uh, Nasrallah, that Red had a speech and he said, Israel is ultra, ultra afraid of us. They will not dare to cross to Lebanon airspace. We got Iranian, oh, yeah. <laughs> Iranian same systems and so on. In that very night, Israeli air, air fighter jet flew openly over Lebanon at night. Uh, people in Lebanon could openly hear the planes uh, in the capital. Everyone could hear it. While over Lebanon, uh, Lebanon quote-unquote airspace, they shot rockets at uh, Saddam, uh, at, at Assad, Assad uh, uh, facilities and so on, uh, equipment being transferred to Hezbollah, equipment being set up by, by, by Iran in their uh, non-officially Iranian uh, autonomy in South Syria and so on. Regular targets, they do it every few weeks. Uh, and and uh, that's not the end of the story that they uh, they owned uh, Nasrallah this threat who said they are afraid to enter Leban- Lebanese airspace. Turns out that Syrian quote unquote SEM system shot missiles at the at the airplane and one of the missile missed uh, the, air, the, the the jet and entered Israeli airspace and uh, most likely I never saw it openly but m- more than likely, Israel t- told one time to Assad, you are not even allowed to enter a missile to Israeli airspace or you will be very reg- regretful. 
So anyway, the missile entered Israeli airspace. The Syrian uh, SEM system operators in panic immediately self-destructed the missile while in air. So the missile blew up. Uh, it turns out a few fragments uh, came to to the city of Um El Fahim, an Arab city. The the Shrepnels landed there and and an only Arab city th- in yeah, and on, yeah and they are not and they are mostly mostly peaceful and mostly friendly as well. So the only area in Israel that got an alarm of a ro- impending rocket barrage and Shrepnels were this uh, mostly peaceful Arab town. And uh, Israel, as a response for this rocket entering Israeli airspace, even it was self-destruct, was to immediately launch uh, uh, ground-to-ground uh, missiles and destroy this uh, same system as a revenge for merely merely this rocket entering Israeli airspace. In so, other words, don't even look at us. If you look at us wrong, we may get angry. Yes, yeah, so we had an ultra chat day. May it happen more often. Uh, a hopper you approve? Hopper yeah. approves, I'm sure. Yeah, le, le, le write us if you approve this. Uh, just uh, uh, buy my book says, uh, say what you want, but the Palestinians are pretty brave and not afraid of death. Uh, and Star Hopper says, uh, being a death cult isn't a virtue. Well, it's it's a virtue in, in a certain sense, but it's their war is pointless. Because yeah, but uh, they, they believe their own propaganda. They still believe that the Israelis are colonialists, and if you scare them enough, they will leave. They don't understand that the Israelis are never going to leave. Um, so uh, they might scare a few, but the vast majority of Israelis don't plan to leave. So the misunderstanding of the Israeli mentality causes them to fight this endless war, which they can never win. Uh, but, you know, they have the long game in mind, so who knows yeah. what will happen in 200 you know, years, I don't. You know, uh, by my books, that the long games we are winning currently, we are on the yeah. winning streak, because our birth rate is higher than, their, than theirs now, and we have Aliyah and a higher birth rate right now in Israel. We are the majority from the river to the sea right now. This is an uh, unspoken effect that being hidden by the main, mainstream yeah. media in the West, especially the non-Israeli West. So we are the majority. We are going to be even more and more of the majority. Uh, the, the Arabs in the PA are so internally, so spiteful to each other that most mm-hmm. likely they are going to have a civil war and a few uh, loyal city-states uh, will emerge that will just make a peace treaty with Israel, the city-states and so on. That would turn Mordechai Kedar, who is the topic today, into a prophet of sorts <laughs> because he predicted it. Yes, yeah, so we are the majority. Our majority becomes stronger and stronger, and so on and so on. Uh, yeah. So long term, we are currently on the winning streak. Again, so that... we are not supposed to be uh, too uh, unwary, and uh, we should be on our toes and so on. But uh, they, they are the one who should be more fe- fearful of the future right now. Yeah. Um... Well, I mean, if they wanted peace, they could have had it a hundred years ago, but they just don't want to accept us. So uh, anyway, that's a different story. Um, today, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Mordechai Kedar. Uh, I don't know how you'd say it in English, I suppose Mordecai. Uh, most of his friends call him Moti. Um, so anyway, uh, he's uh, a very interesting um person, uh, well known in Israel. His uh, YouTube videos, although his channel is not very active, he actually gives lectures that are published on YouTube and his videos get uh, very high numbers. Possibly the, he's the most popular political commentator in Israel. Um, he also advised uh, the Gerard Kushner during the negotiations with um, um, the various Arab countries that later signed peace deals with Israel. He, he he's spent the last forty years immersed in Arab and Middle Eastern culture, uh, studying Arabic, studying about the religion, uh, the people. He reads, uh, you know, Arabic literature, modern and uh, classic. Uh, he read the Quran many times, uh, obviously. 
uh, different uh, famous uh, Islamic scholars. He's well versed in, in the issues. He argues with them on the, in Arabic on Twitter and Facebook. And um, he worked for Israeli intelligence for 25 years as well. He's a well-known scholar, academic, writer, journalist. I mean, pretty impressive <laughs> all round person, right? Uh, so, uh, which one shall we start with, Silva? Wait. Which uh, oh, video yes, shall we start with? I sent you a picture of the car of, of that glorious... Uh, oh, yes. Glorious uh, Bonnie and, modern Bonnie and Clyde. Let's see, yeah. let's see if I can just drag a link into the thing. Let's see what happens. Hey, it worked. Yeah, yeah this is the, the car. Now. Yeah, I'll uh, resize it. I'll you see that? You. That's uh, just for you. The U the, that's according to the UN extrajudicial killing. You're yeah. seeing what you're seeing is pure evil. Yeah, these are people on their way to kill Israelis. Um, great work, uh, Shinbet, whoever was in charge here. Thank you. Um, okay, so which video shall we start with? I'll Let's see in a gun conductor, Al Al Qaeda. Oh, uh, yes. Journalist, <laughs> quote unquote. Okay, I'll, t I'll tell the background story, yeah? So, uh, Al, Al Jazeera, which is famous... Oh, Uri Gobe, is Mordechai here on this? Uh, I just no. don't know. No, he's not on here. We're doing a thing about him. Uh, we, we will invite him over to our tiny little channel. I don't know if he'll be interested. But, uh, yeah, we, we're big fans and we're going to, you know... Watch and talk about what he says. Um, so uh, yeah, so what happened is Al Jazeera is a is a large, successful, well financed media operations, uh, which was started by um, a Palestinian from Tul Karam, which is um, what is it, central think, Israel or something? Yeah, I think and, ISIS uh, was founded by a Jordanian, a Palestinian. It could be, I'm not sure. Um, and um, it's based in, is it Qatar? Yeah, Qatar. And it's financed by the uh, royal family. Uh, the aim of Al Jazeera is basically to agitate the Arab world, um, to destroy Israel and to weaken the West. Um, the news is basically propaganda, but well-dressed and well-presented uh, they made sure to hire the best people. Um, yeah, it's basically Muslim Brotherhood propaganda. Yeah, you, you it's need Muslim to be very, very, very well versed on uh, the Sunni Islamic world to understand their game, because sometimes they could be fake progressives. Time, sometimes yes. they are pro-terrorists. Sometimes they are anti-terrorists. Yes, you need to understand them very, very precisely to understand their game. These people mm -hmm. are are not fools. They're, they're not basically. No, they're very smart, actually. Very sophisticated operators that learned from the best. They they are continuing the KGB um, thinking, but they've improved it uh, and learned from others as well. So, um, so when you watch Al Jazeera and all its um, sister networks, like AJ+, Plus, which is aimed at teenagers, to brainwash teenagers, uh, TYT, the Young Turks, um, was uh, subsidized by them. Um, there are people who are aligned with them, like um, Rashida Talib, Ilhan Omar, um, and so on. And anyway, Mo Kedar used to be invited regularly because he's a good debater, he speaks fluent Arabic, and he knows what he's talking about. And everybody wanted to debate him, so they brought him on this uh, show. I forget the name. We'll see a clip from it in a second. It's a very popular. I think it's the number one political chat show in the Arab world, um, and um, and it's yeah, what El Jazeera course... is getting banned in most of the Sunni Muslim countries right now. Yeah, I mean they they had enough of the agitation, and this show they really invited Kedar so they can win the the debates. 
uh, and show how terrible and stupid the Israelis are and how amazing the Arabs and the Muslims are and how right they are and, and so on. Uh, it didn't work out very well because Kedari knows his stuff and really gave him a hard time. And they lined up one of the, after the other uh, trying to debate with him. None of it went very well. It was, in some cases, it was ridiculous. I mean, he made them look completely ridiculous. So it got to a point where the head of the network said, OK, I'm going to debate with Kedar. I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to sort him out. And this is what we're about to watch. That clip uh, where the head of the network uh, took the challenge of defeating uh, Kedar. The, the, the so <laughs> own debunk destroyed. Yes. So let me just make sure it's all set up correctly. Yes. Hello? Here we go. Yeah, you can you can play. Uh, Kedar later said in a lecture in Hebrew that after this stream, he was per after this interview, he was personally banned by this guy on the on the left yeah. from ever appearing again. Yes. He threatened to shoot any employee who ever uh, brings him <laughs> up uh, accidentally again. Yeah, never mention Kedar. Sayyid, Sayyid Murdakhai, this decision هل هو دق مزيد من الأسافين في نعش المفاوضات الفلسطينية الإسرائيلية أنا حقيقة لا أفهم هذا الكلام هل على إسرائيل أن تبحث عن إذن من أي في العالم هذه عاصماتنا منذ ثلاثة ألاف عام وكنا هناك عندما كان أباؤكم يشربون الخمر ويأيدون البنات ويعبدون العزة واللات والمنات now, for those, hold on, for those who don't know, what he's referring to is something that the Muslims themselves admit, which is before Muhammad, they were uh, killing uh, unwanted girls by leaving them in the desert, in the sun. Uh, they were worshipping idols. They were uh, drinking wine and worse. And Gedar doesn't say it, but uh, everybody knows what he's talking about. They're talking about mass orgies and all sorts of... Uh, um, to be an Islamic behavior. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> historically, uh, where is the rock at Mecca? Was a ceremony of some pagan uh, city religion that yeah. they did mass orgy in the spring to increase the fertility, spirituality, or some lunacy of this sort. Apparently, uh, and uh, I believe it's called Jahiliya in Arabic. That period. Yeah. It's like the yeah. dark ages of before, before Islam. Yeah, but it was not only degeneracy, it was literally pseudo Mad Max. There was a uh, raid of slavers that if you walk in the des desert, you will be kidnapped to become a slave. Uh, uh, endless uh, tribe wars. It was a literal uh, semi hell. I think the, the heat was not far off of, of a hell uh, definition as well. And anyway, when you say it to a Muslim and you remind them, to an Arab Muslim and you remind them that, this is extremely triggering, uh, triggering uh, to put it very, very mildly. Yes. Uh, basically, well, because the, the, at the same time, the Jews already wrote a Talmud. So, uh, slightly more advanced, to put it mildly. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but I think that this may be very, very wishy washy claims, but you. Uh, I can't remember who claimed this. I think it's some jo old Jordan Peterson video I saw that he, there was some claim that he quoted some uh, psychologist or something that some tradition and text could implement the psychology of the time in people in the, in the present and implement the psychology of people from the past and so on. I heard this claim. So anyway, there, there may be by by reading the Quran and and being subscribing to all the Muslim tradition, that somehow it imprints the psychology of a person from the seventh century to that matter, and basically you you remind them the the, the utter shame they wore, and you make them very anxious. These uh, days may come back, so this is a very very sensitive uh, thing to bring up to a Muslim. Yes. هذه هي مدينتنا من ثلاثة ألاف عام وإلى أبد الآخر. يا أخي إذا كنت تريد عفوا عفوا سيد مرضخاي عفوا 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 إذا كنت تريد أن تتحدث عن التاريخ أيضا نحن نتحدث عن القرآن لا يمكن لك أن تلغي القدس من القرآن. يوم أن تبتعد عن الألفاظ التي تسيء للعرب والمسلمين رجاء. 
to, to say to Muslims that Jerusalem is not the Quran is offensive, right? That's yeah, because it, uh, yeah, it puts their faith in question because it's a very, very, very late development, even post the classical uh, earlier hadith. Yeah. This is basically a very, very modern hadith. Some people, including Kedar in a famous Hebrew lecture, may claim that the origin of this very modern hadith is very dubious. So this is uh, not only tell them, uh, F you, you are wrong, it's, t- it's to imply that the hadith are completely broken, yeah, it, which it semi break the religion. It appears to be a political hadith that was created during a dispute between the families in uh, Damascus or Baghdad and the families in the Hejaz where Mecca and Medina are. So they needed uh, somewhere to go because they wouldn't let them come to Mecca. So they decided on Jerusalem. Um, this is not sure. Nobody knows for sure, by the way. It's a, so it's open to yeah, interpretation. Yeah, but it, it's a fact that it does not mentioned in the Quran. Yes. Yeah, he no. says it. في موضوعنا لو سمح الآن هذا القرار لا يتعارض لم يرد ذكر القدس في القرآن سبحان الذي أسرى بعبد ذكر القدس لم يرد في القرآن ولا مرة واحدة يا سيدي لنتحدث بالسياسة عفوا لنتحدث بالسياسة الجزيرة لنتحدث بالسياسة لو سمحت أوكي القدس خارج المفاوضات القدس لليهود نقطة لا يمكن الكلام عن القدس بأي شكل من الأشكال و... وأنتم تعيدون هذه هذه الكدية مرة بتلو الأخرى على المستوطنات يا سيد مردخاي المستوطنات المستوطنات يعني نحن كان... نتكلم عن شكك نحن نتكلم نا... يا أخي نحن نتكلم عن شكك جديدة داخل مدينة الكوز أنت تتحدث عبدا سيد مردخاي تتحدث عن بناء حوالي حوالي ألف وحدة وكان هنا Yeah we always need more homes what's the matter Yeah, we have a good birth rate. Yes. بإقامة 10,000 وحدة وتم وقف هذا القرار والآن تتم عملية تسريبات من تحت الطاولة 1000 2003 يعني القدس ربما ستشمل الضفة الغربية بعد ذلك أليس كذلك؟ يا أخي إسرائيل لا تعد الشكاك التي تقيمها قطر في شبه جزيرة قطر فما شأن لكم بالقدس القدس مدينتنا إلى أبد الأبدين ولا شأن للجل الجزيرة ولا لأف ولا لا لأحد في مدينة القدس نقطة هي مدينة اليهود فقط ليس لأحد أي شأن بمدينة القدس يعني هل تريد أن تقول بأن كلامك هذا يعني بأن المفاوضات التي تتم بين الفلسطينيين والإسرائيليين تتم بناء على الأمر الواقع الذي تتحدث Yeah, like you are not religious. Again, it is a double position by these uh, terror, uh, terror uh, operators. L- like he is not religious himself. No, and Kedar is. Yeah, no, but, but he's totally religious. It's just uh, a pragmatically ultra-secular argument for no reason. He has no yes. like, like to, to say this argument. Now, Mr. Mordechai Kedar. يا أخي أنا أدعوك للقدس لتشوف بأم عينك كيف كيف القدس أصبحت مدينة زاهرة بعد أن كانت خاربة تحت عيدي العرب حتى سبعة وستين نحن بنينا هذه المدينة من جديد وهي الآن مفتوحة للمسيحيين وللمسلمين ولليهود على حد سواء كما لم تكن أبدا This is a very sensitive point to Muslims as well because I think I read a statistic that there was not a single new city that reached over uh, 300,000 people in the Arab world for over 100 years. Really? No. There's something of this sort. As a no, new no, city, there's... not... Oh, a new... Okay. A new city, not a, a all ancient city getting more populations. أبدا تحت سيطرة الإسلام لأن الإسلام أقصى اليهود من القدس والمسيحيين أيضا طيب بعد أنا أريدك أن تعطيني جوابا تحت عفوا تعطيني جوابا يعني لماذا كلما كانت هناك مفاوضات فلسطينية إسرائيلية تتحدثون عن الاستيطان وتصدرون قرارات بالاستيطان مزيد What do you mean settlements? You attacked us You lost the land The land is ours We can build in that land We can use that land. You know what, what is a, truly the settlement? Al-Aqsa Mosque or the Temple Mount? Yes, exactly. That's a settlement. 
You know what we don't do? We don't build uh, synagogues on top of mosques. Okay. زيد من تهويد الأراضي الفلسطينية وبالتالي قتل مقومات قيام أي دولة فلسطينية في المستقبل أليس كذلك؟ هناك حتى اليوم ولا حرج هناك دولتان فلسطينيتان دولة في غزة ودولة إن شاء الله ستكون على الدفع الغربية. This is something he changed his mind about, by the way. He doesn't believe that uh, there will be ever be uh, a Palestinian state. حتى وإذا استمر الفلسطينيون في هذا السوء. Uh, John Saxon, the guy on the left is the head of, uh, I believe, the news department of Al Jazeera. Uh, hey, hey, came, uh, yeah. water important okay, here. We, we use Al Qaeda here. <laughs> Al Qaeda, yeah. The, the mm -hmm. uh, propaganda arm of Al Qaeda. Yeah, this is, may, this is a bit uh, cutting corners because Muslim Brotherhood is a different player from Al Qaeda, but sometimes they meet, sometimes they don't. Well, Al-Qaeda came nickname. out of the Brotherhood in yeah, some but, way. Yeah, but they do not see eye to eye on all issues, but sometimes no, of they, they love them pragmatically or they oppose them pragmatically, but they came, but they are basically, yeah, let's go on with the real story. وعدم عدم الجدية في المفاوضات ستكون هناك دولة في الخليل ودولة في في رملة ودولة في 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 نابلس ودولة دولة حسب حسب المواصفات التي تتحدثون حسب المواصفات التي تضعتها. No, we already have five peace treaties with Muslim nations in the last two years. You are mistaken. Yeah, this was. You are mistaken. This was a decade ago. At least, yeah. 2010, maybe earlier. Yeah, I think in the near four years we will have an open peace treaty with Saudi Arabia at this phase. Yes. But, but, but most likely we already have a secret peace agreement right now if I put my money, money on it. But, yes. uh, but uh, high words from this Al Qaeda freak. Israel, but the government is not different from what you say, Sayyid Murdaqai. The Quds is not different. No, it's not. Yeah, it was Jewish. You conquered it. You took the land. You evicted the Jews. We came back uh, 18, 19 years later, and we didn't uh, evict the Arabs that lived in East Jerusalem. They're still there, even though many of them actually took Jewish properties. But never mind that. It's it's actually not true. But the kid, I will let, give him uh, an answer. <laughs> الدفع الغربية ليس تابعة لأي دولة في العالم لأن ليس في هذه المنطقة أي سيادة لأي دولة مثل أنتاركتيكا في الجنوب لا 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 ليس الأردن كانت محتلة لهذه الأرض ليس في الدفع الغربية أي سيادة لأي دولة بخلاف الجولان بخلاف جزيرة سيناء بخلاف أجزاء أخرى الدفع الغربية ليس عليها أي سيادة لأي دولة في العالم ولذلك لا يمكن لأحد أن يكون بأن هذه هذه هي منطقة محتلة من أي دولة احتلت هذه المنطقة الأردن كانت محتلة حتى 67 واليوم إسرائيل أيضا هي تحت سيطرة إسرائيل هذه المنطقة لا تتبع لأي دولة في العالم ولذلك نحن نتمكن من أن نقيم عليها ما نشاء yeah, what he said is that techni by technically you could very, very easily and reasonably by reading pure international law before it was commissized, uh, uh, became commi communistic uh, in, the, in the 60s in the UN by the Green-Red uh, Alliance bloc in the UN votes. If you read the uh, human rights uh, uh, international law code in the 50s, 60s, Israel was more or less I think in almost everything, the, the right uh, party. But the, the rulings on this matter were uh, green-red alliance in the 70s. For example, mm -hmm. when he says and it did not belong to any country, yeah, if you speak about modern history, it was by, by the Turks occupiers, then was a, a British occupiers, but later they had an international mandate to give it to the Jews. So they had it temporarily to give to the Jews by strictly autistic reading of international really. court. Yeah, they wanted to make it international before they left the war and founded Jordan to, to conquer it uh, wholesale. 
anyway, so British Britain by international law had it by by right if they gave it to the Jews and they did not. Later Jordan occupied it, and then we g- g- liberated it. So by pure international law, there, there is not a single country on earth that can say Judea and Samaria belongs to us. This even the uh, leftist uh, international uh, international law lawyer will agree. Like uh, Jordan yeah, can say. But- it's a i mean not i never take all this i don't think people care about technicalities yeah but they uh yeah so, like this what what the leftist uh, will tell to you will will uh, counter argument to this claim yeah it was not belong to anyone but the the arabs were uh, claim their nation and demand independence therefore you must do it uh no matter the historical facts the legal facts and so on oh i mean the, want Ex- they would have had the nation if they were peaceful and didn't want to uh, genocide us. They would have had the nation a hundred years ago. It's they're less likely to have one now, but if a hundred years ago they could have had it straight away. They all they had to do is say yes. <laughs> so yeah, look, look, I I don't really care. Uh, Judea is us. This is the main area of the the, the heritage of the nation on the, of Israel, and it's crucial for Israeli defense because it's a tiny country and this is the mountainous area look out in all, all important key areas. If they, they God forbid, have the Judea and Samaria, a, a single punk with a mortar launcher that could be inserted into a school backpack and a $50 mortar could shut down our international airport for a week. And that's yeah. damaging billions by $50 mortar. No, if, you, if you're independent, it's belong to us and you're a murderous psychos. So yeah. no... No. Uh, by the way, Uri Gobe is saying uh, the Al Jazeera chief anchor admitted that Jerusalem is not mentioned in the Quran. He actually admits it. It's true. In another video, this is the video that I found that he deleted, because Silver decided to delete. I prepared all the <laughs> videos for today, and Silver thought they were just junk, so he deleted them all. Bad Silver. Shh. Enough Shh. with that. Let's I had to have another, another go at you. I had to have. I had to. But he reminded me. So Uri, yes. So actually, this uh, um, debate continues, and the the guy admits that Jerusalem is not mentioned in the Quran because it's not. Uh, and yeah, and since then, Kedar has never been invited there again. Uh, so, uh, there. Truth, true, and facts are irrelevant to be- Palestinians, quote unquote, and the far left. Yes, the the most of the most of the far left. Uh, uh, subverted their Marxism into this uh, neo-Marxist post-modernism, uh, quote-unquote, uh, hydra of lunacy, and they do not believe in uh, Aristotelian uh, logic style of facts anymore. They say the truth is uh, ever-changing and everlasting, but it's totally wrong to not give them everything you want. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, By the way, a... this, um, this, this left, this green-red alliance, We've known about it for decades in Israel. So this is a message to Westerners who care about their nations. We've been under attack by this coalition of the Muslim Brotherhood and the far left for decades. And by far left, I mean, then included back then the Soviets, today it includes Iran and, um, and China and, and so on. China! This, this alliance of convenience has come for you. Has come for the West. It's the same thing exactly, and each one of them is helping the other, and yeah. uh, just the, because they both hate the 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 Western, the capitalist, the free, liberal, whatever society that the West uh, has created, they see it. The religious people, the Muslims, see it as, you know, uh, what's the word, heretic or an abomination. It's it's absolutely degenerate. And has to be fixed, and the the leftists obviously they hate capitalism and they think it's evil. So this is what is going on. And what amazes me is that I've been watching. One of the reasons I started watching uh, the YouTubers in the UK and the US was because I was waiting for them to understand that they are under the same attack as Israel has been for decades. And for some reason, they just don't get it. They just don't get it. And listening to the academic agent has been the most disappointing thing because uh, I I thought he was making a genuine attempt to understand what is going on in the world. But over the last year or two, it's the 
pretty much degenerated into nothing but it's the same with all of them none of them is getting that this is well some of them are possibly but i don't think they understand it like we do we we lived it you know we knew all the time the biggest enemies were the communists and the muslims um, yeah, let, let's go to another video i'm stuck yeah so um which one is that oh. uh, which one is that um i can't remember let's watch oh. it <laughs> Oh, it's very short. הם יקבלו אותה רק, אך ורק, גם מן הצד הדתי וגם מן הצד התרבותי-לאומי, רק אם ישראל תהיה בלתי מנוצחת. קורקט. וגם אז היא תקבל שלום זמני, עד שהיא תהיה לא מנוצחת. לי אין בעיה עם זה, כי זה התרבות המזרח התיכון. אין בשוק המזרח התיכוני, אין שלום אחר. אין פה נשיקות ואין פה חיבוקים, כי פה זה לא אירופה וזה לא אמריקה. פה יש מזרח תיכון. It appears uh, Europe becomes the Middle East right now, both uh, enrichment-wise and both uh, the Ukrainian standoff-wise. Uh, mm -hmm. So it appears that uh, uh, we, we got equality down, uh, quote-unquote, as the yes. socialists always give in practice. נקבל שלום זמני לתמיד. By the way, this was... Sorry, just a second. The interview before was in Arabic, but this clip was in Hebrew for people who don't understand. Yeah. You were going to say something? Yeah, I said I want 200 more Merkava Fours of the assembly line right now. After I heard this. Yes. Yeah. Basically, he he's absolutely right. Uh, this is how countries survive in general, especially in the Middle East more than anywhere else, because of the traditions of the Middle East, the history of it, the, the type of cultures that evolved in this pretty harsh region of the world. Um, so that's that. That's the way things are. So this was um, number four. Shall we play number three? Or number one. Ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so just before it starts, this is from the Alex Zeitlin channel, where you can go and watch a few uh, more. Um, there's a... But uh, I would advise to your uh, peace and calm to not watch videos with, uh, how do you say the name of that uh, bold uh, ex uh, Black Panther uh, fellow? He's in Hebrew anyway. The, the, uh... Yeah, but. What is the, the name? Igal Binun? Yes, Binun. Yeah, yeah. Do, do not watch him for your, the sake of your calm and uh, wellness. But the, the English playlist is mostly Kedar, uh, so if you want to uh, check him, uh, it's Alex Zeitlin is the channel, and go to the English playlist. So uh, Kedar makes uh, these short videos in English where he tries to communicate issues uh, to the rest of the world. We are today in the 19th of May, 2021, the 10th day of the jihad against Israel, which is waged by Hamas. And missiles uh, from Gaza. He speaks about the, the two weeks, uh, very short uh, uh, rocket uh, versus uh, rockets and air force war versus Hamas uh, last year during the Jerusalem day uh, attack by them. This is very recent news are hitting Israel uh, in a very, very problematic way. But it's not only uh, Hamas and Gaza. This is also from inside Israel. The Islamic sector here in Israel is in a, some kind of, uh, of uprise against the country, rebellion against the country. And this is in addition to what happened in Jerusalem formally. Uh, how can we explain it, what is happening? The only explanation is that this is a jihad. Because jihad, according to the Islamic uh, uh, mindset, jihad is not only a fight uh, with missiles and, and weapons, as it is with Gaza. Jihad can also be riots in the streets. Jihad can be in the media. Jihad can be in economic issues like burning a shop which belongs to a Jew. Uh, jihad can be even with a prayer to Allah. 
to defeat the Jews and the infidels. The jihad could be by literally having 3,000 men praying five prayers a day in front of the Eiffel Tower, making oh, terrorists... Park. Yeah, making terrorists uh, feel uncom- unco- uncomfortable there without any threat of physical violence. Yeah. Th- that's the form of jihad, and we perceive it that way openly in open conversations between them. Yeah, it's a soft So conquest. jihad is a multifaceted uh, phenomenon, uh, which we see today, definitely. And this is the, this is the jihad. And uh, in order to understand what happens, we have to understand the, the mindset of the jihadists. Whenever they see the infidel, or the Jew in this case, in a weak situation, this is the time which everyone comes, this one with a missile, this one with a torch, this one uh, with a cell phone for the media, this one uh, for, with anything else. Uh, they smell blood, means they smell the weakness of the state of Israel, because Israel for two years uh, cannot uh, shape a government, and our politicians uh, cannot get their act together. And unfortunately, uh, this weakness uh, which Israel showed... And Trump lost the elections, very important factor in the Middle East. Uh, let them understand, yes, they can. And they started the riots. Maybe they took some ideas from the Black Lives Matter uh, in the United States. Yeah, maybe. ...of America last summer. St. Floyd. Uh, no, no, fact checker decided this is incorrect. Why? Mm. Because they referred to another fact checker. Why? Because they interviewed an Arab and they said that this is because poverty and you and uh, this is unverified report that got recited for another fact checker and so on and yes. so on and so on. Therefore, this is false. By the way, uh, I realized that the fact checkers were rubbish very quickly why because i wanted to check something related to israel some event i think it was around 2014 and 15 <clears throat> and i went to snopes and it said complete false information it was absolutely rubbish and then at the bottom it gave the sources and the sources were al jazeera articles so i thought yeah okay so obviously these fact checkers are rubbish and i kept telling people but everybody thought i was crazy i said these fact checkers are corrupt. I don't know who's running this, why it's there, and why people think it's a fact check. And then I saw that actually everybody was starting to rely on them. Because to start with, Snops was a, a website more for like urban myths. You know, like if you were told, I don't know, that someone did something weird or that England has a law where you're not allowed to chew a gum while you're walking in front of the palace or one of those weird things, you can check it and see if it's true or not. And then it became more and more political. And then, yeah, and then they used sources like Al Jazeera, literally a yeah, propaganda the, arm of the, the Qataris. The, center, the modern yeah. Anglosphere center-left became extremely technocratic, oligarchic mentality, the, the uh, Anglosphere center-left. Uh, what the F? Welcome back. Yes, this fucking triggered me. This guy is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. The uh, What triggered you is the stuff he says about uh, Britain, which is... Kind of true, uh, but I don't want to get into it because it's a very complex story where a lot of uh, Israelis are also uh, at fault here. So, um, yeah, which he should have mentioned or just left it alone because it's not right uh, quite the way he spun it. But maybe he's not aware as well. I mean, it's possible he's not aware. So, anyway. By, by the way, he personally better off than 1,000 CIA analysts right now. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Listen to this guy nonstop. It, he knows more than. Uh, Wait, uh, I have two. MI6. I have two quick uh, questions. How yes. do I become a fact checker or a CIA analyst? Because this appears to be very, very easy jobs. One job is just uh, tell what the leftists want to hear and recite some random other uh, fact checkers. So it's a very easy job. And to become a CIA analyst, to say a peace Iran, a peace Iran. Uh, uh, make Iran happy, be mm. accommodating to Iran. Uh, let's say uh, you, you can find 10 different phrases to say this. Uh, yes, the meaning of no, the- you don't understand. If you're nice to them, they will love you. They will see how nice we are. They, be, won't, be, won't, they will be, stop wanting to kill us. Be, be nice to North Korea. Be nice to yeah. Turkey. Be nice well, to... Well, that's how they operate. The I mean, the, 
Be be you nice want... to be nice to the Houthis. Be nice to the Pakistanis and nuke and nuke uh, Russia. Look, the yeah, people I, that I, I could hate be Israel, a analyst as well. The people who hate Israel want to defund the police, so that basically <laughs> sums them up. <laughs> and uh, they've got a fentanyl addict as the hero, which is, by the way, uh, Saint Floyd is also uh, a Palestinian hero. <laughs> just so you know. Just so you know, the, the whole BLM and Palestinian struggle is very connected because they're all, it's the, um, it's a green-red alliance in action. Uh, yeah. Hello, v, 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 Viva Mitol. Just Keda call is him, one uh, of the Viva. only people who, Viva, yeah, Keda Viva. is one of the only people who really understand how Muslim and Arabs function and think. They are cousin after all and are not unsimilar to us, but with a fascist religion. Uh, yeah, kind of. I don't like to put labels on things. They do yeah. jihad when you enter the areas they live in, and especially in the old city of Jerusalem, by simply making you feel uncomfortable for being there. They do. By the way, this this is new. <clears throat> um, it wasn't like that. I used to I used to go into Arab towns as a kid, and it was not like that at all. Uh, at, I mean, not everywhere, but many places were very very friendly. Um, the people that hate Israel typically seek to destroy the West as well. Starhopper is saying yeah, Israel is the, the front line. The, right. the yeah, people yeah. from the left and the right who hate yeah. Israel mostly hate the West. Correct, yeah. Um, in a strange way, Israel is like uh, the West. The, the most, uh, <laughs> test. Yeah, it's like the, the tip of the West in certain ways. Um, and the West depends on Israel a lot more than they realize. Anyway, definitely uh, they took the idea from there and, and they came out with the, these riots inside Israel in order to topple the state, not in order to get some more rights here in Israel. They don't want the state to begin with. And for, because according to their mindset, uh, the occupation is not what Israel did in 1967. The occupation is since 1948. Tel Aviv is an occupation. Haifa is occupation. Yeah, the, even the Tel Aviv was literally built on empty sands in 1905, if I remember correctly, on complete, utter, complete, desolate, empty sands. They still see yeah. it as occupation. It's Spain, Jerusalem, dunes. not to mention. Well, listen, is, Spain, is, is, Spain is occupied. Spain is occupied. You yeah, by, by the Spanish people. Yes, by the Spanish people. They're you occupying know that, it. I, that ISIS released a coin, I think. They literally said that they respired caliphate as a base for the rest of the world uh, glo uh, domination their uh, first uh, aspired border including uh, greek vienna austria and mm -hmm. spain yeah by the way the 9 11 date has significance in muslim uh, in islam the 9 11 wasn't chosen at random um, look it up see what happened on that date in history what was it? Some invasion or uh, it's something? the time that they lost to the Christians. Um, is it the, the gates the of Battle Vienna? Of the, yeah, this is well, yeah. their utter limit in West yeah. Europe. Yeah, definitely yeah. An occupation. Even Be'er Sheva, Nazareth, all the state of Israel as it was shaped uh, in 1948 is occupation according to their ideas, and this is why uh, they should fight against it. And uh, Islam cannot accept uh, the state of Israel uh, even on a square centimeter on the seashore of Tel Aviv. And yeah, this is not only the regular uh, Dar al Islam rule that every single area that was completely ruled by Islam to X number of time, I don't remember if there is actual concrete time, but it was a century, so it, it's applied anyway in the case of Israel. But it's not only this religious rule that uh, if it was ruled once, it must eternally regain in jihad to the to eternity mm. as a base to the next conquest. They have another thing that they feel very, very embarrassed as a religion and civilization by the fact that they were utterly destroyed by the West uh, colonialization yeah. in the 17th uh, and 18th centuries. From Napoleon onwards, really. Yeah, and this says nothing about this post-colonial uh, dreck of a... Uh, uh, it's because they abused us, we hate them. Yeah, I, I do not deny there was an abuse in many inst instances. It was very real evil and so on. But the fact they are still very angry to this day have nothing about concrete harms in X, uh, X uh, time. The thing is about how the hell these Christians 
the religion uh, they call it uh, din battle as a voided religion conquered yes. all of us like nothing without any real resistance without any hard, uh, fierce battles they just steamrolled us and this caused a very urgent crisis in the religion of Islam in the early 20th centuries as the 19, mm. 1905 to 19, 1915 yes. and they basically had a split between the semi-secularist uh, pan-arabist uh, ultra uh, multi basically yeah yeah, that's the how they, the, they're the progressives who then split into the fascists and yeah, uh, yeah, but, communists yeah, and then the yeah, Muslim Brotherhood. They, yeah, there were no, different no. reactions to this. To this no, um, Muslim Brotherhood is the other half. The first half yeah, yeah, yeah. the more secular is the pan-Arabist and the more religious became the Muslim yeah. Brotherhood. Yeah. From, from that ideology, slightly more extreme became Al-Qaeda and Al-Qaeda-like organization. And from that ideology, Hamas. slightly more... Yeah, Hamas is basically Al-Qaeda, but not in name. No, yeah. no it's a bit more moderate, quote-unquote, because it's it's also uh, in the spectrum, also have a leaning towards the Muslim Brotherhood side. It's not complete. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they, they are uh, in the They're all related. Muslim... They're all related from... They all come from the Muslim Brotherhood thinking. Yeah, just... they are... Hamas is in the middle between Muslim Brotherhood to Al-Qaeda yeah. and so on. Uh, and from uh, Al-Qaeda, even slightly more extreme, it's ISIS. Mm. So, uh, and here's how all this monologue uh, connects to Israel. They feel ultra humiliated that the Jews, who are the most yes. voided, quote unquote, because we are before Christianity in their uh, theology, the most voided, and the mo- least amount of people who are spread around the world for 2,000 years, uh, who three years prior were uh, third of them were annihilated in the Holocaust, just beat them with a makeshift. Uh, improvised army in 48 and uh, and uh, just steamrolled them, them uh, utterly in 67. Yeah. This this is not about any occupation. Oh, we lost that hill in Judea. This is strictly about they feel humiliated Honor. as a civilization. Yes. I mean, the, the insult, the Israel won the whole thing in 67, uh, in six days. Uh, the way The way it was done, it was. It showed them. It, it showed them is completely uh, incompetent, completely out of the depth, yeah, out of touch with reality. Uh, it, literally, Israel had to be stopped. I mean, and the same in seventy three. They managed to uh, su- quote unquote surprise Israel in seventy three. Thanks, uh, America. And um, by the end of the war, Israel had to be stopped by the world. And the same in eighty two when they went yeah, in, the, the was it? in Lebanon. Again, Israel had to be stopped. And they even when they think they won against Israel way in Lebanon, second Lebanon war, it's only because Israel is trying to play by the rules. I mean, you know, we could Israel could easily just wipe yeah. Lebanon. I mean yeah, if if they totally <laughs> technically won one, speaking. If they totally won one time, we were not be we were not here, so they never won a single war. Yeah. The, the best case they can claim that they managed a stalemate or a, and so on. Only it's a stalemate only because Israel has to is abide uh, by international pure, law pure, and yeah, yeah. Uh, fake human rights in combat, yeah, international UN, pressure, economy, BBC. economy pressure, and so on. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, but, let's, but, let's hear the end but, of it. But uh, remember that I spoke about that ultra chat day that we had uh, uh, this week. It may come. Be, we may have a Chad war one day, and I'm talking about the outcome, not as uh, God forbid about harming civilians intentionally and so on. But we may uh, do the the laser uh, meme. Uh, the entire state will do the laser eyes meme. May may it happen soon. This is yeah. what pushes them to the streets in Lod, in Ramle, in Haifa, in Jaffa, in Be'er Sheva, and in the Negev as we saw, in addition to what happens in Jerusalem and other parts of Judea and Samaria. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something very frankly. Uh, Israel is in the front line of the Western civilization. If Israel falls, the next station or the next bastion which they will fight on will be Europe. And after Europe collapses, the next bastion to fight on will be America. 
This is their mindset. This is their plan. They say it. Racismus. They say it. They don't even try to hide it. They say it openly, and all the journalists and all the experts, oh no, they don't mean it. They're, they're, they're silly people, they're just talking, you know, they like to talk, don't pay attention. Those Islamists. Uh, there is a comment here by uh, Weber, we call you Weber from now on. Yeah. Arabs, you include Iran there and Turkey, I think that he meant about the civilizational uh, humiliation of them and their aspiration of uh, honor uh, redemption by destroying Israel. I think Iran have inner, uh, inner... Uh, it's inner about inter- Arab, it's about uh, Islam. Yeah, but he spoke about Iran and Shiite Islam. I mm. think about Iran specifically, it's about, not even directly about us, it's about Iranian and Shiite uh, interaction with Sunni Arabs, that basically they want to own them for, uh, for being the dominant uh, branch of uh, Islam and Arabs uh, subject, subject, subjectifying the 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 persians for centuries they want to emulate them by beating us the israelis and to to prove them that they are the superior uh, branch of islam and the superior race because this have a racial supremacy element as well so the persians, they want to kill us to 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 own the the sunnis the persians and the arabs have, have been fighting since records exist basically They've yeah, always been and, fighting, they hate each other. And if the Persian ever, God forbid, get us, and they will never, and if they somehow miraculously will have us, they they uh, they will not live to see the victory, where I said it openly. Yeah. Uh, if somehow uh, they manage to do it, they march in on Saudi next. If you don't hmm. support Israel in this struggle, you will find the struggle in your front yard, not only backyard. And the encouragement which they will get from defeating Israel in this... Uh, Zionist Hasbara talking point. No, fact. It's actual fact. Listen before it's too late. You should have listened to Israelis 40 years ago, but you didn't. It's last chance now. Jihad will definitely push them to continue the jihad against Europe and against America. Ladies and gentlemen, just understand it. Support Israel in order to support yourself. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, his music is very loud. Um, this is a terrorist attack. Yeah, <laughs> terrorist by, attack. By radical Zionist. So, so we've come to the last one, which is very interesting. It really talks to the West. It's about uh, what immigration means in Islamic society and how it's different from um, uh, the patterns of immigration that you see in the West. And I include even, let's say, uh, Mexican and South American immigrants to America. It, that is different from Islamic immigration because these people come to work. They come mostly come to work. Uh, come for a better life, come for the shining city lights of America. Uh, Muslims don't immigrate exactly for the same reasons. Um, I'm sure many of them do, but there's also a large uh, number that they just view immigration differently, and Kedar explains it well, and I'll be right back, yeah? You can manage yeah. without me, Silva. Well, why the hell is this deserting in battle you're doing all the time? Why is he not playing? Go on, play. I'll just make sure. It's... Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. I would like to dedicate some minutes to a concept, an Islamic concept, uh, named Al-Hijra, means the migration. Um, in our societies, usually people do not go to live in other places if their original place or birthplace Uh, provides a um, decent uh, place to live, um, school, university, workplace, uh, family. Uh, so people remain in, in the country in which they were born to, and uh, they live there because they know the culture, they are part of the culture, part of the place. And migration to another place is not the first option. Of course, if uh, people miss something, school or house or workplace, 
they migrate to other people, to other, to other places, but uh, this is the second best option in general. Uh, in Islam, uh, the picture is, uh, is a bit uh, different. Uh, yeah, speaking about uh, immigration, let's not talk about immigration, let's talk about ascendancy. Uh, American in the diaspora in the chat, uh, you are required, the world is coming to a crisis, come to your home, they ascend already, uh, as Aliyah. In, in Islam, the... Uh, uh, hashtag negation of the diaspora. The Islamic thinking actually follows the Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad, uh, in his birthplace in Mecca, he was uh, persecuted, he was humiliated, almost being murdered. So he migrated to Medina in the year of 622, uh, like uh, 10 years after he started his mission. And uh, in Medina, his place of migration, uh, he became the ruler. He became the master of the, of the city, the commander of the army, uh, definitely uh, upgrading from what he suffered in his birthplace in, in, uh, in Mecca. So the conclusion is that the migration is actually something which enables the Muslim to turn his status from persecuted suffering in, in his birthplace to be the master of the place in the place which he migrates to. And this actually is embedded in the Islamic doctrine, in the Islamic way of thinking. And uh, this is why migration uh, in Islamic societies is viewed not as the second best option, but probably the first best. Means that if you can go, if you have the ability, if you can uh, uh, take your family and, and, and to migrate to another place which is not yet Islamic, this is good because there, with other Muslims which will, who will migrate with you, you can create a new community, you can build a school, you can build a mosque, you can build an Islamic madrasa, whatever. So Islam will settle in that country as well. And uh, this is good because Islam spreads itself, or wants to spread itself all over the world uh, as a part of the raison d'etre of Islam. So migration, in Islam is viewed in a much more positive way compared to Western societies. People do not... Uh, uh... Uh, let's see a comment. Mossad could yell at me for not speaking, but I do not like speaking. When I don't have anything to say, I think this is the part of the, the Ashkenazi Jew male in my avatar picture and not as the Yemenite uh, Jew, the lower, uh, uh, the lower part. Uh, yeah, but uh, I need to speak, so Mossad will not be angry with me while he's deserting uh, mid battle. Let's see the chat. Uh, I think that Islam is a Judaism sect. Uh, yeah, this is a complete uh, theological discussion, but if you talk talking st strictly, Jews believe that more or less uh, in biblical times, prophecies became voided, more or less. Uh, I think in the last book, I don't think Ezra have a, an open prophecy in that book. Uh, I can't remember correctly. I, uh, a long time since I read my Ezra book. Anyway, uh, no, we do not believe a prophet what was possible at that time. It was very, very late. Even Christian, I don't think they believed in prophecy at that time in six, 630 more or less. Also, this is a very different difference of a culture to the religion between Judaism and Islam, maybe to a degree Christianity, that uh, we do not uh, ultra idealizing any man of the of the the the, the history of the religion. Mm. For example, I'm there back. is no principle as Moses is the perfect human being. No. that did everything perfectly. You can read about <laughs> a few scenes, opens are open in public scenes he did, like the, the stone and the rock uh, and some uh, 
on yeah. on 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 a an idealized situ- situation like he was separated from his wife and he had a, a, after a while his uh, marriage uh, have, has had failed and so on so, all our heroes have uh, character flaws they will yeah they will. Like king david and uh, yeah. and so on there is literally a very famous song in israeli culture as nesaf tishrei uh, he, he's talking about many many topics but it, it somehow connects it to scenes of characters in the the, the Hebrew Bible, like uh, Jonathan, David, Solomon, mm. Saul. Uh, yeah, it's it, yeah, it's kind of a trope in the Hebrew Bible that yeah. almost everyone are flawed to a level. Yes, and there is no if you could find uh, theoretically, I know that in secular archaeology, archaeology go all the way to Moses' time is a bit problematic. But if somehow theoretically you find the proof that there was a Hebrew Moses at the time of the biblical Moses and he loved to eat X, X uh, food, it will not become codified uh, holy food uh, that no. get eaten in a ceremony. And if you do not like this food, you are a, sin, a sinner, which is a kind of a Islamic uh, attitude. Just for the point that, uh, was it uh, Joe Saxon made? Uh, something, uh, Islam isn't fascist. It, uh, these modern terms don't really apply. There are similarities between Islam and socialism, between yeah, Islam and fascism. Is form of fascism. Yeah. 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 So right John Saxon wing. is. Hold on. When I don't talk, you don't talk. When I talk, you start talking. Yeah, yeah. You John Saxon. In battle and you dictating orders. <laughs> I should call them out to mouth to mouth to you. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> John Saxon said Islam isn't Jewish. Well, if you actually read the Quran and you read the Torah, and uh, a few uh, selections from the Talmud, you can see that Muhammad was deeply influenced. Uh, the story that Kedar tells is about uh, a Jewish guy uh, who was apparently excommunicated, yeah, excommunicated from his Jewish community, uh, who came to live or hang with uh, Muhammad's family. And he told him uh, lots of uh, the Torah stories. And um, it appears Muhammad was a curious guy and he um, picked up on a lot of it. And yeah, and that's why there are many similarities and um, you can find uh, many of the stories, including the Exodus, uh, Moses, um, and so on are mentioned in the Quran. Uh, The only difference is that they believe that our version, the Jewish Bible, is corrupt, and their version is absolutely true. Yeah, and, and they claim that uh, Haman, from the, the villain of the Esther scroll, was the advisor of Pharaoh, which is the, the, one of the earliest biblical books, with one of the latest, uh, the late, the, the latest uh, biblical yeah. uh, books. I mean, there are also and, uh, direct copies, like this um, thing that they always say that killing one person is like killing all of humanity. Yeah, that's supposed to be that's quote. that's a Talmud quote that they copied. That quote is uh, about five hundred, four hundred years yeah. earlier. And, and I think that they copied. I don't know if it's a famous early hadith or it's directly from the Quran. I'm not that well versed. That they copied the uh, the legend of uh, Abraham. There is a story that there is a, a a legend from generation to generation that is not in the Bible about Abraham. Uh, uh, vandalizing his father uh, idol shop i think that the muslim have it as well so it most likely uh, copying from the uh, judaism uh, uh, oral judaism sources and so on yeah understand it or do not know about this but this is the situation and actually what we see today in europe is more or less this the, the, this uh, this thing uh, of course those millions who came to europe or most of them uh, ran away from failing states like Libya, Iraq, Syria, Yemen, Afghanistan, and Iraq, of course, uh, or Lebanon. And, and they migrated to Europe in order to survive, in order to get uh, shelter, in order to get uh, health uh, care, uh, education to, the, to their children. Normal life, yes, definitely, uh, most of the McCarthy plan you mean a wife or you mean a sex day for a murder the tribe? Yeah. yeah. He had a collection of Michael. wives. <laughs> Not just one. Yeah, uh, the normal Muslim is only allowed four, but uh, how many the Quran claimed or the, the earlier Hadith claimed he had? Nine, twelve? I'm remember. not sure. Actually, I don't know. Yeah, there is a Hadith that he 
had a relation with all of them, all the nine or more, I can't remember, let's say nine, all the nine, every evening, three, six, three, six, five, and he had the, the, the strength like the, to the knife, like the first. Yeah. Well, he's a capable man. I mean, and, and all that studying, you know, it's impressive. Impressive. That, uh, in order to save themselves from the atrocities of uh, those failing countries which they uh, were born into. But once they come to Europe, they start settlement in Europe, means to uh, be rooted in Europe. They don't come in order to stay there for a while until things get better in their homelands. They come in order to stay. They build mosques, they build uh, schools, for Islamic schools. Uh, they build uh, madrasas and uh, Sharia courts and halal food and all these things and, and turn mo uh, uh, churches to mosques. They buy them. Uh, and and uh, taking over the, the, the public sphere in large number of people who pray in the, st in the streets, uh, mainly in order to... Uh, let's see what Weaver wrote. Moses married an Arab. Uh, no, we're talking about... If, the... if you're talking about purely the biblical source, I think that she referred as, as Kushit, so it's either literal black... Uh, Som or, Somali, or, or, Ethiopian, Eritrean... No, Something I think like that, that most biblical scholars agree that the name of Kush in the Bible refers to the modern area of Sudan. Sudan. Oh, okay, yeah. Sudan. Yeah, yeah it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah, so it's not. It's kind of Arab, I suppose. Sudan. Yeah, yeah. It, it may be referred to the ethnicity, but it at le, or, or only the skin color. I can't remember the mm. the opinions. I mean, so it, it, it doesn't matter. Black, if she yes, was no black, one is perfect. So Moses if she was black perfect. in the modern area of Jordan, <laughs> pre the Arab conquest, it could be Phoenician ethnicity, it could be uh, African ethnicity, who passed by there, North African, it could be a Babylonian uh, tribe who is wandering. It does not have uh, anything to... You basically look at it with modern lenses. If, if it's modern day Jordan, she must be in an Arab, which could be very false. Yeah, I don't think it was a message back then, yeah. that here we are, this is our place, and we'll do here whatever we like. And this is actually what happens. That the hijra, the, the, the migration... Hijra is... We understand these words because in Hebrew it's very similar. Hagira. It means immigration. It's actually a means for Islam to spread itself in a peaceful way, which will be accepted little by little. Of course, it takes time. And this also, okay, because uh, there is a verse in the Quran which says that in Allah ma'asabirin, means Allah is with those who have patience. Yes. And that's a very important thing is in, in the West, our politics, that includes Israel, our politics is in a four-year cycle, five-year cycle in some countries. And in most countries, it's the cycle after the election. There's a bit of excitement and chaos, and in in our in our case, there's all these coalition talks. After that, there's a government, and uh, three years less than three years later, we're already talking about the next government, and nobody is actually looking at what's important. They're just looking at what to get elected. Uh, a lot of the time, it distracts them. Uh, the Muslims think long term. They think generations. They don't. They even think hundreds of years. It doesn't matter if Spain is not ours. It will be, as long as it takes. But we will be ours. That's the way they think. Nations taking Europe over all Western Europe. Over. And of course, having Muslim immigra immigration into Spain is one step in that direction. Uh, it can take fifty years, hundred years. Who cares? Uh, but finally. Uh, Western Europe will be Islamic, and what we see today uh, is already uh, implementation of this uh, uh, idea in um, neighborhoods like Barbès, like Saint Saint Denis in Paris, and in other places in Molenbeek, in uh, Brussels, and in many other neighborhoods in Britain, in Western Europe, Northern Europe means the Scandinavia and uh, other places as well. 
So uh, this is why uh, mm-hmm. we have to understand that hijra is actually something which is meant behind uh, the scenes, but not always behind the scenes, uh, to spread Islam uh, all over the world. And this is actually what they do. Uh, I highly recommend uh, this uh, book, uh, Al-Hijra, means migration, which was written by Sam Solomon and E. Al-Makdisi. Uh, I'm not sure that these are real names, maybe Sam Solomon. Uh, and, and of course, look at the, of, uh, already the picture. Torsion uh, horse. Is the Torsion, Torsion horse. Uh, so it, it already gives you a good idea about how hijra means uh, migration is meant to bring Islam in a peaceful way to, a, to countries uh, which uh, would not allow Islam to come to, that, to those countries in a belligerent way. So uh, here we are. Uh, this is what we uh, have to know and uh, to open the, the, head, the eyes and to open the minds uh, to the changes, changes which Europe goes through. And I'm afraid that the Atlantic Ocean is not wide enough to save America, or North America at least, from uh, this fate of Europe. Because what we see, we see today, the Islamic... No, tell you what's going to happen. The West is going to obsess over Jews. That's what's going to happen. And this is how things will go down. Because they are used to blaming Jews for all their problems. So if aliens from space attacked uh, France, they probably blame the Jews. Organization uh, and the settlement of uh, Islamic organizations in North America reminds us very well about what happened in Europe like 15 or 20 years ago. Another amazing thing is that uh, the right wing on the West never understood that Bibi was their best friend, better than Trump. Although he doesn't have as much power as Trump, he was their best friend. And they actually hated him and were glad to see him go. <laughs> they didn't, they so don't understand <laughs> anything around the world. I mean, the, the, the level of understanding of geopolitics in the West is amazingly ignorant. Yeah, Very the, few the people know the anything. Their understanding of the Middle East that every single person is utilitarian, uh, secular, uh, Western European, and it's racist to claim otherwise. And if the the, the 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 Oriental is not like that, it's because he was abused by the West somehow. No, that's the leftist. The right wing is no, a the, different theory. Even the centrist in Western Europe think like yeah. that. Or some of the center right even. Man, yeah, <laughs> true. They, they mistake to think that someone is from a different civilization is to claim that he is genetic uh, inferior and this depo- this this bizarre to evil ideas and therefore it's pseudo nazism to to make this argument but not all people from ex civilization act like that civilization and people could change their behavior and so on so yeah they, they see this uh, claim of a uh, other civilizations is a proto Nazism, all this uh, Western uh, European uh, end of history lunatics. Yeah. So, if you want to have an idea how America and Canada might look like in 20 years from today, look at Europe today. Because America and Canada are behind Europe in a time difference of like 15 or 20 years in this regard. Yep. So uh, if uh, the Americans, North Americans, do not watch it, uh, uh, North America will have the migration of uh, Europe uh, in 20 years in North America. Hey, Biden lets them in. They just lets them in. Yeah. Uh, what is up with that? I'm so black on the US, uh, sadly. That I heard, uh, I never bothered to open it up because it sounds so depressing. Maybe Hopper could uh, give more information about Biden just giving federal license of uh, drug making labs to make crack for drug addicts or some lunacy like that. They just give the drugs away for drug addicts. You heard wow. about this? 
No. Yeah, sound, sound like a... Listen, I'm addicted to steak and chips. Can can I be uh, also registered on this program? Oh, oh, here's a secret I didn't tell you. Uh, I, I was at my work very depressed at the morning, so I did an experiment and I did very un-Israeli thing to do. And I started to eat a, a hamburger uh, uh, meat inside a, a sandwich at work for dinner at nine o'clock. Man, it make my day start with a smile. It's breakfast. Really. Yeah, but it's very un-Israeli to eat meat in the morning. I think True. it's one of the, the only countries which in the West that it's uh, non-mainstream to the extreme to not eat meat at breakfast. Yeah, we're not allowed to so, say we're part of the West, apparently, I was told. Yeah, we are above the West. We are in 4D chess and you are in 2D yeah, exactly. chess. We are yeah. above you. Uh, do not question it ever again or, we, or you will be banned. <laughs> yeah. and, and Ben, I ban you. This is a westernized uh, banning and the easternized banning at once. Uh, <laughs> uh, you need to educate yourself, truly. With this uh, note, uh, please, uh, this is a good food, food for thought for legislators. For... Like the, like my avatar picture, for example, is this socialist? Is this nationalist? Is this a universalist? Is this just a nice painting? Uh, your West, uh, your non, uh, uh, the diaspora jury and the Western, uh, the Western uh, nations cannot understand this picture. Is five D political chess? My avatar picture. It is. It is. For uh, uh, public affairs. Uh, uh, people who deal with public affairs, and uh, actually every citizen in America uh, to learn from the uh, experience of the Europeans. Because if you uh, don't uh, beware, uh, this will be your fate. Thank Correct. you so much. Yeah, this is a message from Kedar to the West. I highly recommend uh, watching... Um, his lectures. He has a lecture that is called something like Why is the Middle East uh, so confusing or something like that. Um, there are many versions of this lecture. Uh, you can just pick one. Um, if you prefer, you can pick one from four years ago, which was given in Washington in um, um, the same time that he was uh, meeting with uh, the Trump team. So that's that. What are we watching now? Oh. Yeah, I need some. <laughs> uh, I need some nonsense to stay awake. I'm tired. Okay. Uh, yeah, you got a thing with cats, haven't you? Uh, only big cats. Man, I remember this angry Joe uh, nonsense when there was the first uh, COVID uh, curfew. Uh, Tiger King. Yeah, I think this is the, the biggest Trump failure to not pardon an exotic Joe. I want a season two, god damn it. What is uh, this? What are you talking about? May, ah, you did not worry into the Tiger King uh, phrase. Ray Blue, uh, what did uh, Carol Basking did? Write in the chat. Carol Basking, <laughs> another name. This yeah. is a great video. This is not Kedar, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I highly recommend watching uh, Kedar if you want to understand the Middle East and actually understand humanity, because yeah. the way the way the um, Islam and the Middle East works kind of reminds you of how everything really works. Be you know under behind all the facade of you know uh, of civility, really power is very important, and those who are powerful can afford to be nice. Yeah, uh, let's talk very quickly before we will finish about the reason from that thumbnail photo about mm. how Mordechai Kedar is basically some uh, continu continuation of the near extinct uh, Bernard Lewis uh, score, uh, mm -hmm. sect versus the, how do, how do you call that, uh, pan Arabist uh, pseudo intellectual lunatic? Edward Said. Edward Said. Yeah, he want to very briefly to explain this divide or should we leave it to another stream? I mean, I can quickly, I'm not an expert on this, but basically Bernard Lewis was the scholar of the Middle East that people took seriously. Um, Kedar is a continuation of him, but Kedar is much more 
connected to uh, the ground. You know, he 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 worked in intelligence. He listens uh, to Arabic media. He watches it. He argues with them. He lives it. He's he may as well live in an Arab country <laughs> as much as the level he's involved. There's another person who is like that, Eddie Cohen, which is also very interesting. Um, and he's a continuation of that. And Edward Said is a product of the pan-Arabism, which is a product of Soviet and fascistic ideologies about unifying uh, the Arabs under some kind of secular regime, um, which he brought to the West. And he was picked up by the left-leaning academia, like, uh, I don't know, like what? Like uh, cakes, basically. They loved him. Uh, they loved the way he looked, which is very important in academia. What are you doing? <laughs> Apparently in academia, how you look is very important. And Edward Said did look better than Kedar when wearing a suit. So obviously, Edward Said won. Uh, and today, the way the West understands the Middle East is very much the Said uh, nonsense, which is wishful thinking, wishful secular uh, progressive thinking. Uh, Kahana was a genius, actually, of all his interviews. Okay, the yeah, Kahana uh, thing, okay. Yeah, I'm not yeah. very keen on this. Uh, yeah, that's another topic. I'm not yeah, very uh... ultra keen on him. Yeah. Uh, he, he certainly was a very smart guy, but uh, yeah, we're not uh, exactly supporters. Um, so uh, yeah, it ran a bit short today, uh, but uh, short is also good. Apparently, most people actually drift off after 90 minutes going by the stats. However, long streams work because people turn up late, you know, like after two hours, suddenly people, new people come. So who knows? But uh, yeah, thanks for people to, for sticking with us. Uh, please share and like and subscribe. Uh, we are on the Discord. The link is in the description. Um, if you want to look up Kedar, his name is spelled sometimes K-E-D-A-R and sometimes K-E-I-D-A-R. And we got both in the video title and description. Uh, Uri Gobe, uh, we tried to contact you. Um, apparently, uh, we... We should be talking, so let's be talking. Uh, and uh, what else? Uh, thanks for joining what, what TF. Uh, nice to see you back. Uh, I think watching that Kedar upset you so much. <laughs> you know the how used we are to we we that that, that uh, accusing accusing England of uh, some issues. I don't want to get into it, but. Uh, I mean, we used to being attacked so much, it's nothing for us. It's like, you know, this is what we're we, we, we seeing. We're seeing the same attacks now being applied to um, on, on Westerners, on the lifestyle. It's been called whiteness. We may as well call it Jewishness. You know, it's, it's so reminiscent of uh, Nazi propaganda. Um, yeah, it's but... scary. But they do a double uh, talk when they say whiteness, the the, the, the leftist, modern leftist politic, they, it's 70% Western is the ideology of the West and 30% is actually ethnically, ethnically white. So it's a double uh, speech, but mm. it may the first to ideology. If you're white, far leftist, or established Democrat, you're 80% of the time uh, scot free. Yeah, but that's another time of our okay. ever yeah. uh, 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 always uh, promised uh, stream of uh, analyzing a woke ideology. Apparently, but what it, if uh, is generally here, but he doesn't always comment unless we trigger him. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks yeah. for the support. Tell your friends, tell everyone, uh, and uh, please share because otherwise, I don't think many people watch us. And even when you share, not many people watch us, but <laughs> a few more. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, do your part in this world takeover. I mean, you know, as you can see, we need all the help we can get. We've got a Patreon. The, we're not trying to earn money. We're trying to get raise some money so we can pay someone to help us uh, edit clips, uh, generate graphics. Thanks to Nutty for um, doing the uh, thumbnails for us and the intro. And Kobe for the music. And uh, that's about it. Uh, have a good weekend, people. I'll play the outro.